good morning. It is it's 8 19 a.m. on May 11, 2021. I want to continue discussing matters related to concerns associated with tax policy. First, let me put on the record in February 2018, I contacted by post mail, certified post mail from Houston, Texas. The Department of Justice in Washington, D.C., with a more than 300 page packet of information, including legal motions, list of evidence, as well as investigative notes and formal reports, in an effort to participate in and follow through on a formal process of launching a federal RICO prosecution. That package was intercepted and was misappropriated and misapplied to the wrong purposes. My understanding is what it was used for was some form of insurance concerning an actual insurance company that had litigation pending at the time connected to defaults. And part of the reason I contend that my package was intercepted is because somebody had already taken it upon themselves to illegally expropriate my life and my efforts in order to use for their own personal political gain. Part of how they intended to accomplish that was through, among other things, major acts of tax evasion and tax fraud. This is not exclusive to a specific party affiliation, and I believe it is actually part of what the charges are, which is that appearances of factional differences do not necessarily prevent against the existence of the enterprise. And in this case, it is actually the appearance of factional differences in terms of the Republican and the Democratic Party that helped promulgate it. Now, when it defaulted, when it in, was intercepted, what also happened was another default. And this was a default connected to actual national security matters related to the United States military. Nobody wanted to acknowledge that somebody had already illegally <clears throat> signed up to use my education and training in non-destructive testing so that they could place bids connected to my certification for their own personal private gain. And so when I had tested and received a certification in visual testing, they had used that in some sort of bidding process connected to a optics program. Now, that has actually come to fruition, at least in two different capacities since then. But the day that package was actually received was the anniversary of the military standards manual related to night vision goggles. It also correlated with a conference in Florida during the time frame I was a minor child aboard a military base in Florida. Had that package been formally and officially received, and recorded as received on the day it was actually delivered, then it would have met whatever obligation was set up in connection with either or both of those events. And then the context around which one discusses or considers the subsequent programs associated with optics, as well as the other matters that were connected to whatever had to do with my relationship with federal outlays, and already established appropriations would have been differently characterized and there would not have been available the dark credit that financed that school shooting in Florida instead. There were three members of the junior ROTC program that were murdered that day. That was a strategically coordinated hit that did not need to occur. There would not have been the material conditions for it to occur, but it did. And every day of fraud since then accrues and allows for the perpetuation of those dark lines of finance. Something very specific is accomplished when children's blood is shed at their school by an act of brutal violence in such a manner. It was a strategically coordinated military covert ops paradigm. Every once in a while, somebody tries to hedge very, very high level military grade bids on when it is allowed to be executed. 
Unfortunately, it has come to my attention, if the reports are correct, that on what would be dated as May 11th in an area of Russia, there was a school shooting. Are you serious? Today is the anniversary of an act of trafficking in connection with uranium smuggling and nobody seemed to take much interest in. What is the tax on uranium? Let me ask a question. If you use hedging on financial reports associated with uranium providers as part of your pension system, do you have an option available to actually liquidate school children to pay for your pension? Because that's exactly what I understand has occurred. And part of the way that that literally is allowed to be accomplished is by expropriating the human capital I personally have acquired as a school teacher, but having it compounded by the fact that because somebody was able to traffic me my entire life for their personal political gain and ascribe my work products to other people who intentionally mischaracterize them, that what should have been payment by me already of my tax in the form of, among other things, a savings bond that could have been allowed to be used for securing schools was instead intentionally defrauded out of me. An attempt was made recurrently to extort me through a false charge coded to a specific metric associated with an intentional strategy of misleveraging risk through a bank that refused to address reports of financial terrorism during an election season. And now, now that we've had the swap out, it ends up hitting Russia. This is the second time this pattern has been allowed to promulgate. And it's the third international school. It's the third school involving minors in another country that got hit. Because people in the United States waived the tax off connected to an intentionally orchestrated and designed dark credit line that liquidates children. For what purpose? What strategic purpose is served? I apologize. This is the fourth time it happened. The Ukraine, China, Afghanistan, Russia. I understand this is directly connected to outstanding matters associated with the decommissioning of the Gazprom gas and oil interest from the former Soviet Union and the subsequent wrangling that members primarily but not exclusively of the Texas gas and oil sector engaged when it came to determining market share. That's how it was allowed to be accomplished in that manner. The arrogance and the refusal to prosecute crimes, including crimes associated with very, very high stake acts of money laundering that are allowed to be accomplished because people abusing their political office have not been prosecuted, makes sport out of murdering children. Do not forget, as part of this racket, there were children murdered in Texas around this time three years ago, weren't there? They were murdered in Texas. And what was the response? Get the medication. They've been traumatized. Make sure they get mental health care. I don't think so. This was 100% preventable. As a matter of fact, last night, I processed a very, very significant transaction with a very unique energy source. I will be honest, I've rarely encountered something at that caliber. This is a very, very dangerous time. It is not acceptable under any circumstances to misrepresent somebody's work products, contributions, and capabilities and use it in a false insurance paradigm, including political risk insurance, 
so that you can open and work dark lines of credit that use the blood and the murder of children as part of your political campaign strategy. And that's exactly what this is. It's not acceptable. None of those school shootings, the one that happened in Florida, the one that happened in Colorado, the one that happened in Texas, the one that happened in California, the one that happened in Ukraine, the one that happened in China, the one that happened in uh, Afghanistan just this past weekend, and the one that happened in Russia. They should not have even been possible. But it's apparently a very high cost to take someone you already set up for the kind of obligations you put on me since I was a child and then lie about me meeting them in the appropriate way. If there was a need for blood as part of that tax payment, you took the wrong blood because that was not what was due.